Hello guys, in this video we'll be looking at DNA results, predicted phenotype, predicted traits of two bell beakers. Uh, one is from Bavaria, the other bell beaker is from England, so let's get into the one from Bavaria. This is what he looked like. Uh, Nashakota is predicting him to have brown eyes, Greek shaped nose and black hair. Uh, Ysek and uh, Snipper Free are also predicting him to have uh, brown eyes, um, black hair and basically dark... Well, uh, Ysek is saying he had dark skin, but Snipper Free is saying he had very white skin. I'm inclined to go with what Snipper Free is predicting because it has a much bigger database and is looking at a lot of more SNPs to determine these traits. Uh, he had BH1 mutation, no BH2, no BH3, uh, which means he probably would have very dark eyes. People with BH1 but no BH2, no BH3, mostly have brown eyes according to my study. And this is what 23andMe would predict his eye color to be on the basis of his genotype. He did not have derived EDAR, which is a gene implicated in East Asian facial traits, so probably did not have East Asian facial traits. Um, he also had the sociopath gene. He had two derived variants in this OXTR variation. Very interesting result here. And um, he did not have the European no-go learner mutation in DRD2 Pro 319 Pro variant, so uh, increased risk of schizophrenia, not a no-go learner. And when it comes to this TAC1 mutation, also in DRD2, he had the normal genotype, which is A2A2, which is a very typical genotype for every human, uh, European, African, any ethnicity, this is the typical human genotype. Uh, however, I've seen Neanderthals, every Neander almost every Neanderthal, every chimp, every gorilla, every orangutan here is going to have the opposite, which is A1A1. He was uh, heterozygous for the Comtes Valmet variation, which is the warrior gene, so he had one warrior and one warrior allele, a very typical genotype for a European, and he did not have the European uh, lactose persistence mutation, and which means most likely was lactose intolerant as an adult, and uh, he actually had a very typically European mutation, which is decreased high myopia risk, uh, so he had the European mutation that decreases the risk of myopia, very interesting genotype here. When it comes to polygenic illnesses and traits, he had a pretty high, like above average risk score for coronary heart disease. He had a very high risk score for brain aneurysm, which is um, why I included it here. He had an average risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, he had an average risk score for Parkinson's disease. Uh, he also had an average risk score for bipolar disorder. And um, he had a very low risk score for type 2 diabetes. And here is his result with MZLP World Ancient Roots K10 from Admixture Studio. Now, uh, with the Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of French Basque plus Bosnian or French plus Great Britain, kind of Basque plus Great Britain, which is like typical for a bell beaker, I guess. But notice the 1% archaic men that he's scoring. This is like the gorilla, uh, gorilla chimpanzee Neanderthal component here. Uh, gorilla chimps, they score 100% archaic men and, uh, gorilla and uh, Neanderthal score 50 to 60%. So this is, uh, you, can you can estimate around 2% Neanderthal ancestry on the basis of this result for this individual. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. Now looking at this result, it doesn't even really feel like an ancient DNA result. I mean, this could easily be like a modern Italian or a French person uh, scoring 14% East Mediterranean. That's, you know, very interesting. Uh, with the Oracle, he's closest to North Italians and Portuguese and like various Spanish groups. With the two-way oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of either West German plus Sardinian or Southwest French plus, plus Greek Thessaly, which is pretty much the same exact result as what he gets on uh, G25. This is the official G25 coordinate that I found on Explore Your DNA, and these, these results pretty much mirror the Eurogenes K13 results. And this is what he scores with MZLP K11 Modern. It's a pretty like atypical result even for a bell beaker because bell beakers were very high in farmer ancestry but this is 46 percent neolithic this is too high actually and he's getting modeled as a mixture of greek neolithic plus like yamnaya like stuff which is patapovka is basically like yamnaya um and here's his result with pandiana lk12 here he's uh scoring actually 46 percent anatolian neolithic farmer which is too much i think it's too much and uh, with the two-way oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of actually 66% corded wear plus 34% uh, Anatolian Neolithic. This is too much. Uh, way too much Anatolian Neolithic because from my understanding, bell beakers should be around 85% corded wear plus 15% Anatolian. Uh, in, you know, in terms of like what they resemble, not in terms of their actual ancestry. They don't descend from corded wear. But uh, this individual is maybe an outlier among the uh, bell beakers. A very southern kind of shifted outlier. And uh, this is his DNA compared with other like archaic or 
uh, non-human raw DNA files, just because why not? He's least asimilar to Vindija and Neanderthal, followed by Clint, Chimpanzee, followed by Katie the Gorilla, followed by Kiki Orangutan. Now, uh, you see on the left I have the most similar column, but that, that's the column you should disregard, because it, doesn't, it, it actually doesn't mean as much as the least similar column. You have to pay attention to the uh, not shared genotypes to really determine um, how closely related a certain group is. And uh, here is the other bell beaker. This one is from Bronze Age England. Now, I did not write the mitochondrial DNA or the um, the timeline because I wasn't sure where it's from and uh, what its mitochondrial DNA is. Uh, but this is his phenotype prediction with Nashakot and y and Snipper Free. He's predicted to have pretty much the same phenotype as the previous person. Uh, brown eyes, dark hair, and... Uh, uh, you know, perhaps even darker skin, because his genotype in Keto G is very uh, exotic to me. His genotype in DRD2 was very fun to analyze for me, because he had pretty much the same genotype as me. He was also not a no-go learner, uh, just like me, and he was also prone to higher nicotine dependence, and uh, he had this genotype just like me. But uh, differing from me, in uh, TAC1, in TAC1 he had A1, A2 genotype, whereas I have A2, A2, which is typical for like every every normal human basically, but he's got A1, A2, which is um, maybe some kind of, due to some kind of archaic admixture, like Neanderthal, or um, when I see A1 basically in this variation, I'm instantly jumping to Neanderthal. When it comes to the warrior gene, he was heterozygous, which means uh, like intermediate levels of dopamine in the brain, intermediate when it comes to stress resiliency and stuff like that, uh, and he had derived OXTR, which is what I call the sociopath gene. Very interesting here. Uh, I actually used to think that this is a uniquely sapien mutation, but I found a Neanderthal with this mutation as well, and uh, he did not have derived EDAR, so no East Asian facial traits, no uh, shovel-shaped incisors and straight hair. Well, probably he could have had straight hair, but it's just not East Asian kind of hair. And um, when it comes to lactose persistence, he actually had the European lactose persistence mutation, uh, which is pretty rare. We, I haven't seen many uh, ancient samples who had this mutation, but uh, very interesting to know. And uh, he did not have the European pr uh, mutation that protects against myopia, unlike the previous individual. When it comes to polygenic uh, traits, polygenic illnesses, he had a pretty high, uh, slightly high risk score for type 2 diabetes, a slightly high risk score for Parkinson's disease, um, a slightly low risk score, maybe average risk score for schizophrenia, a slightly high, actually a pretty high risk score for brain aneurysm, a slightly high risk score for bipolar disorder, and a uh, pretty high, actually, pretty high risk score for asthma. This is what he scores with MDLP World Ancient Roots K10. With the Oracle, he's very funnily getting modeled as a mixture of Great Britain plus Finnish, which I'm not really paying too much attention to that. But what's interesting is he's scoring 0.8% archaic men, so if you multiply that by two, uh, we can assume that he had around 1.5% Neanderthal admixture. And uh, this is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. This is actually a very different kind of result from what you saw previously. Uh, here he's resembling Northern Europeans first and foremost, not any Italians or Spanish people. So we can already kind of assume that these bell beakers were a very diverse group because this guy is most similar to Swedish people and the previous guy was most similar to like Italians. And uh, this is the official G25 for this sample from, from Explore Your DNA here. It's also closest to all kinds of Scandinavian, Swedish, Icelandic, Norwegian, Danish. Uh, but with the Oracle, it's actually getting modeled as a mixture of something from Scandinavia plus Darginian or Kalash. And this phenomenon of having a little bit of Caucasus admixture, this is something you're going to see with the other calculators that we're going to show you in this video. This is what he scores with MZLPK11. Interestingly, this is very different from the previous result. This actually looks a lot like mine result uh, with this calculator. It's very similar to me. And line 20, pay at, look at the line 20. It's 66% uh, Bell Beaker plus 34%, get ready for this, Andronovo Ineolithic. Ineolithic Andronovo, that's crazy, dude. Uh, Andronovo Ineolithic. I don't know what, what that's supposed to be. <laughs> And uh, with the Pan DNA LK12, once again, the result is looking very similar to what I score, actually. Um, but uh, with the Oracle, he's closest to Bell Beakers from Germany. And uh, number two is Patapovka here, which Patapovka is supposed to be Yamnaya, I think. So it's, why is he closer to Yamnaya than to uh, Corded Ware from Estonia? I can't explain you that. And this is the two-way Oracle. He's basically a mixture of something from Bell Beakers plus like Yamnaya related stuff. A little bit more Yamnaya than the average Bell Beaker. And uh, with the Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Icelandic plus, plus Lesgin or Chechen. Uh, which is kind of like, I told you to remember the uh, Caucasus shift that he had relative to Icelandics. Well, there it is. And this is what he scores with Gidrosia K3. Now, 
a modern Swedish person is not going to score like this. A modern Swedish person is going to score 100% West Eurasian, but keep in mind that this is an ancient individual who did not have a lot of the modern Caucasoid drift. And this is what he scores with ancient Eurasia K6 here. The result is kind of similar to what I score. Uh, and with the oracle for this calculator, he's getting more or less a mixture of steppe, middle, late, bronze age plus Spanish or Sardinian. So he's a little bit uh, shifted towards Southwest Europe relative to the steppe, middle, late, bronze age uh, reference group. And uh, if we compare him to all kinds of Neanderthals and monkeys, basically he's closest to uh, Vindija Neanderthal, followed by Clint Chimpanzee, followed by Katie the Gorilla, followed by Kiki Orangutan. Now, uh, Vindija Neanderthal is actually like the most archaic archaic Neanderthal DNA-wise out of all the Neanderthals that I've uh, analyzed so far. If you compare him to other Neanderthals, he's going to be closer to them than to Vindija. Thank you guys for having watched until the end. You can download bo both of these files in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. And uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.